Hello everyone, it's Hobbin Root here, and I just wanted to do a short video on uh, things to expect when coming into Ultima Online Evolution. So, you're brand new, you just started, and uh, if you're anything like me, maybe you've played the game before, back in the day when it was, you know, back maybe in the late 90s, early 2000s, and you uh, found out about Evo and you want to kind of get back into it and give it a shot. Well, um, there's a couple of things that I noticed when I logged in. Uh, that were a little bit different than uh, the way I was used to it. First off, there's going to be a couple things in your bag that uh, you'll want to know about uh, prior to messing with them. The first one is going to be a grayish looking ball and uh, that's going to be a skill ball. That's going to give you an extra 700 skill points to put towards any skills uh, that you have available. The uh, d Now, uh, the first thing that you would think is, okay, well I get to master seven skills immediately, but um, I would advise against doing that, and so will everybody else on the shard. Uh, everywhere you go, you'll ask them, hey, should I use the 700 points in my skill ball for this or for that? And everybody's going to give you a big, giant, resounding no. The reason for this is that most of the skills that you have uh, available to you inside of your skill tree can be trained and actually trained AFK. That's legal in this shard, so you won't have to uh, spend hours upon hours upon hours beating up enemies. Uh, in order to master swordsmanship or tactics or parrying if you uh, if you want to there's going to be places available for you to do that and uh, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to save that skill ball for when you get uh, certain skills to up to a hundred because you won't be able to get some skills up to 120 uh, either a at all or B without a substantial amount of work so leave that skill ball alone until you've grandmastered uh, until you've mastered quite a few skills and uh, you now have the ability to go up to 120 because if you don't it'll be a giant headache getting there later. The second thing you'll find in your pack is going to be a yellow looking, it's going to be a yellow square looking thing or a yellow diamond looking thing and that's going to be your gold ledger. Unlike most of the older UO virgins, uh, in this version you can actually carry gold with you without being in danger of losing it if you die and that is if you get to keep it in your gold ledger. Uh, but you'll want to make sure that anything that you auto loot either goes straight to that gold ledger or you go into the gold ledger and click the blue deposit button and select the gold that's in your bag. The next one's going to be a tealish or kind of a weird blue color uh, square object that looks exactly like the token or the gold ledger. It's called a token ledger. Uh, the token ledger um, gives you tokens for all sorts of things, literally everything you kill, everything, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that you do gives you tokens, and those can be used at auction. Um, they can also be used for a couple other things, uh, which I, I mainly use them at auctions. I save those up. Uh, the other one is going to be a weird looking round black and red object that is going to be uh, your storage for your Evo coins. You receive Evo coins by staying online and doing things. So the amount of time that you're online, you'll build up Evo coins as you go along. Those can be used to start champion spawns. Uh, 50 Evo coins will start a champion spawn. Or if you're anything like me, you go straight to the Casino Royale, which you can find under the gate travel uh, under the gate travel menu and uh, you spend it on gambling and then you get uh, deeds for it so uh, you can use those for that or you can use those for champs or you can auction those as well there's going to be another blue-ish backpack looking object inside of your bag and that's going to be a safe trash for tokens backpack everything you put in there can be exchanged for tokens I will reiterate everything you put in there will be it can be exchanged for tokens if there is anything that you want to keep, do not put it in that bag because you can't get it back if the bag swallows it. I know that from personal experience. I lost three keys and an entire suit of armor that way. So don't make the same mistake as me. If you're not disciplined enough to make sure that you don't put anything in there, don't keep it in your backpack. Uh, the next thing you'll find is a new player guide that's going to have some relevant information that you'll want to look through. It's going to look like a small book. Just look through it. Uh, it's not very hard to... It's, it's pretty quick from front to back, so I would suggest looking through that uh, when you first log in. You'll also receive a world map, and you'll receive a blue sack called a loot bag. Now, the interesting thing about the blue sack, don't do what I did with it. I just chucked it in my bank and forgot about it. That blue sack, everything you put in there, will be on your body when you die. So it's kind of like getting everything either blessed or insured that you stick in it. 
Uh, so it's a really, really good thing to keep with you. Um, now, a couple of things as a new player. Uh, the very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to join the new guild. This shard actually has a guild specifically for new players uh, that they they help you out with a lot. They'll give you uh, they'll give you a beginner suit of armor. They'll help get you through the new player dungeon. They'll show you what to do, and they'll really answer any relevant questions you have about this shard. Uh, they were a great resource for me when I started, and uh, I really wouldn't recommend doing it any other way because the first two or three days I played I didn't join the new guild and I basically ran around dying for about two or three days and, and didn't make any progress but once I got into the new guild I made quite a bit of progress after that so um, that's one thing to keep in mind the gates that you're gonna see are gonna look a lot different than the ones you might be used to there was a one in Britain uh, the one in Britain in the original UO was way outside of town but in EVO there's a gate right next to the bank and the the interface for the bank for the gates look way way different they actually have everything broken down much much further than they used to uh, in the original UO and even in some of the other shards that I've seen so definitely take advantage of that you can go straight to every single dungeon you can go to any of the display areas by the way, if you get a chance, if you're curious about some of the things that this shard offers that are custom, I would definitely recommend paying a visit to the displays area underneath the gate travel uh, UI and just checking out some of those places because there's a lot of stuff in those places that uh, really gave me good information as far as what was offered in the shard uh, even before I had to ask a question. So if you get a chance and all of the areas are safe, I'd go through the display area in the gate travel and just stop by some of those places, read some of the books, look at some of the items and see what things, what custom things are available on this shard because there is a lot. So uh, that's just a couple of things that I would recommend doing. Um, if you also want to get a little bit of a head start, make sure that you join the Discord channel for uh, for the general chat. Uh, if you look on the right hand side of the EVO website, you scroll down maybe about a third of the way, you'll see the Discord uh, chat notifications. Or you'll see the Discord chat on the right hand side of the screen and there'll be a small link at the bottom of that little window that will allow you to join the Discord chat. If you haven't downloaded Discord, go download it and join that chat. It is absolutely invaluable. And then you can reach out to any of the new guild members and uh, join the new guild discord as well the new guild house is available for anybody to go to it's under it's also underneath the gate travel ui uh, under new players and uh, the first entry i believe is new player guild house so go there and uh, take a look around the library that's right next to the guild house also has tons and tons and tons of places already marked for you to go that are of a of a great deal of use for just about anything that you need including the an entire quest section in the back of the library so take advantage of that when you first join but honestly as a new player the first thing I would do is join the new guild and reach out to any of the new guild emissaries or even other people in new there's a lot of people that have been in new for a little bit and are definitely willing to help or guide you in the right direction so other than that, really, there's you're going to learn a lot of stuff along the way. There, it, there's people that I've seen, including myself, that are on there. That there's there's just a multitude of things to learn. So don't feel discouraged if it looks like there's just a mountain of information for you to learn. It comes along pretty naturally. Just start with some of the smaller things and then work your way up. All right, and until then, you guys have fun.